the Chapel Club. And uh, Lita Ford has put out a new book called Living Like a Runaway, which is the same title of her last album. And she's going to do a little book signing and Q&A and interviewed by the legendary uh, rock journalist Sylvie Simmons right here. So stay tuned. If you will please join me in welcoming Sylvie Simmons and Lita Ford. It's on? Perfect. I was wondering if you had to push buttons or do anything. I have times. If it goes dead, then you push the button. This could be good. Isn't it lovely seeing all these people in blackout this time of day? Damn it! Good guys. <laughs> We're going to get straight down to business because this woman has a plane to catch. But okay. first I want to say congratulations on the book. It's great. Thank you. It's honest. And it fucking rocks. <laughs> it really does. So what made you decide at this point, to do a memoir? Uh, well, it's something I've never done before, first of all. And I wanted to explain my ups and downs and trials and tribulations of being a woman in a rock world, in a man's world, and uh, having the hurdles I had to jump and things I had to do to get to where I am today. And I wanted people to, to be able to go on that journey with me. So I put it down in the book. I had been beat up by four people that the, one of the guys thought I was hot. And he said something to me, like, oh, I think he said, hey, baby, let me pinch your chichis. What are chichis? Ah, so see, English people don't call them that. We just call them tits. So. <laughs> So his girlfriend gets angry at me, and they decided they wanted to kick my ass. So I feel from behind, it's a long story, but I'll cut it short. She took off her belt, and she wrapped it around my face, and it caught onto my nose and broke my nose. And this is how I joined the Runaways. So I had a broken nose. The red of, or my eyes were red from, you know how they go blood red when you break your nose? So I had this blood red eye and bruises all down the side of my face from being hit with this belt. And so when I joined the Runaways, the girls in the band were just, oh, she's a street fighter. <laughs> Which I didn't, I really didn't. I wasn't, you know, I didn't hit the girl, although, I gotta tell you, I did go to a McDonald's and I bought a Coke and I came back and I went looking for her and I found her in the mall outside and I tapped her on the shoulder and she turned around and looked at me and I threw the Coke in her face. So. Mitchie Blackmore from The Purple at the time turns up in your stories a couple of times and you remember him very fondly. It always seems that you've, you know, he's been kind. He was teaching you some guitar runs and stuff. I wondered, um, are you ever starstruck by these people that you adored as a kid when you meet them? Oh, God, yeah. Especially Richie Blackmore. He was my idol. Him and, and Tony Iommi were my idols. And uh, I got a phone call from Richie. Because Kim knew I loved Richie, and Kim had given Richie my phone number. As a kid, Richie calls me up. I mean, I was 18, so I was of age. I was a legal, you know, legal age to have sex with a, an adult. So, <laughs> what the hell? I went over there, and he calls and says, do you, want, do you want to come over? And my hands started sweating and shaking, and I thought, oh, God, I'm going to Richie Blackmore's house. Oh my God. I was so happy and excited, but I went and we became friends and I ended up doing the Rainbow Tour with Joel and Turner when Joel and Turner was the lead singer. We toured all over Europe. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You told me you played the cello. I had no idea that Richie Blackmore played the cello. Did he serenade you with the cello? <laughs> yes, he did. He played for me in beautiful cello. 
and uh, he played, he also taught me how to do a snake charmer on the guitar, which is basically playing a lead in a minor key. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said he also, there was a way he stood on stage that you imitated. Can you show us? Uh, it was... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> he would just stay there. He wouldn't move. It was like, how does he keep his legs like that all through the show? His legs were so ripped and strong. And uh, he took ballet. Mm -hmm. He took ballet to wow. make himself strong and graceful on stage. He didn't use it. I mean, he didn't like do twirls and stuff. <laughs> you wrote about your uh, relationship with Tony Naomi, who beat you up, tried to strangle you, gave you a black eye when he was taking you home to meet his mom. I guess that's the way the English say, I love you or something. I still love Tony, and I still love Black Sabbath, and I still love everything that they have done for me as an artist and as a musician. Because without these men in my life, I wouldn't be where I would, am today. Without Kim Fowley, without Tony Iommi, it just wouldn't be, there wouldn't be Alita Ford. Chapter, you start with a quote from your song, Rock and Roll Made Me What I Am Today. So I want to know, what did it make you? Who are you today? It made me the queen. Yes. <laughs> the queen of rock and roll. Thank you, Lisa Ford. I'm sure I will. Thank you, Susie's. Let's go. I don't. Let's shut down. I love them, though. I love riding on the back. Uh, me too. Me too. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ronald. Miss Ronald. I did. I did. I did a Christmas single with her. And it was a couple years ago. Did you hear it? Yeah, I saw you on the Oh, that was ages ago. Yeah. Everybody behaved themselves as unusually as it seems. So we had a great time here. It was a uh, very mellow, very mellow, and very nice. So uh, thanks again to uh, Lita. And uh, thanks again to Sylvie, and thanks again to everybody at Books Inc. And uh, now, uh, on to the next. <laughs>